Hello, and welcome to lesson two of our series, High School Chemistry. Um, this lesson is called Standards for Measurement. So um, I hope you had some good luck trying the problems last night in your book, Introduction to Chemistry. Um, and hopefully you looked over this chapter and saw um, some of the challenges and stuff. It's a lot of working with numbers, so um, I, I highly recommend, especially for this chapter, um, that you review some questions and, and try some problems on your own because um, only through continual practice uh, will you get really, really competent at doing these um, calculations. Um, so let's start off. So standards for measurement, right? This um, relates to what we were talking about yesterday with the scientific method. Um, scientists need to do calculations and measurements in order to run their experiments. They need to determine, you know, um, the, the physical properties of matter, uh, why they are the way they are. Well, you can't know that if you don't know exactly what they are to begin with. So you need to make measurements. It's an important, important part of science. Um, and a problem that we run into um, when we're making measurements is that often chemists deal with extremely small things. Um, and so extremely small things means that we're going to be dealing with extremely small and sometimes extremely large numbers. Um, so the width of an atom, right, if you're going to measure it in common units that we're used to, like meters or inches or feet, right, it's going to be so, 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 so minuscule, so small, that it's hard to write down a regular number to represent it. On the other hand, if you want to ask the question, how many um, water, how many molecules of water are there in the ocean, um, again, that number is going to be so astronomically large that it's going to be extremely difficult to talk about it in an easy way, right? You would fill up entire books with zeros just trying to n write the number of molecules that there are in the ocean. Um, so the answer to that is scientific notation. And scientific notation is a way of representing extremely large and extremely small numbers. Um, and so what it does, it makes them easy to talk about, both um, to perform mathematical operations on them and just to talk about and get a sense for how big or small something is. Um, so I'm going to do two examples. One is for an, an extremely large number, and the next will be for an extremely small number. But um, from these two examples, you should be able to write any number in scientific notation. Okay? So um, the example that we're going to start off with is 3,820,000. Okay? Um, it's not a prohibitively large number, but if you had to write it over and over and over again, um, it might get a little annoying. Um, and so if you want to write it in scientific no notation, what you first do is you take the decimal point, which is here, okay, and you move it as many times as you have to um, to go between the first and second number. Okay? And so if you see, we made one, two, three, four, five, six jumps, okay? And that gives us the number 3.82, right? There's no need to write those zeros anymore. They don't tell us any uh, special information, okay? And then you take this number that you got, the number of jumps that you took, and you write 3.82 times 10 to that number, 10 to that power. So scientific notation is just a way of expressing all numbers, big or small, as powers of 10, okay? And so 3. 0.82 times 10 to the 6 might not seem much more simple than 3,820,000. Um, but if you're dealing with numbers that have many more zeros, let's say 20, 30, 40, 1,000 zeros, right? Well, you might have exponents that are 20, 30, 